Hey everyone, and welcome back to Small Batch Devs. My name is Austin. And I'm Elliot. Today we're talking about the Firebase remote config functionality. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe to our channel. We would definitely appreciate it. Without any further ado, let's jump into it. The Firebase Remote Config feature allows you as a developer to configure pieces of your web or mobile application um, and remove that configuration from your code and actually configure your app from the cloud. So Remote Config is really powerful whenever you're testing new functionality, testing the different appearances that your app could possibly have, A-B testing for marketing as well as localizing different parts of your application for IETNN. And you can even use remote config for feature toggling. Basically what Firebase remote configuration allows you to do is set in-app defaults in your code for these configuration values. And then in Firebase, you, you know redefine these uh, specific configuration values um, and keys. And basically when your app starts up or someone loads up your app, they'll pull these Firebase remote config values and override the in-app defaults in your application. Yeah, so these remote config values can be simple strings or numbers, but they can also be JSON objects to allow for more powerful configuration updates. You can also create specific conditionals for your configurations so that different values get set based on what the conditionals equate to. So these conditionals can be set on many different types of information from your application and your user. So you can set these conditionals based on where your user is located in the world, so their geolocation. Uh, you can set it on what version of the app they're running, what type of platform they're running on, whether it's a mobile, an Android, iOS, web. You can also use things like a random percentage of your users will get this config and the others will not. Uh, you can also set the conditionals based on date and time. And you can define all these configuration properties through Firebase, the Firebase console itself, but you can also use the remote config backend API to do this as well. So when setting up these remote configs in your Firebase project, there's a couple things you're going to want to keep in mind. Number one, and most importantly, is don't put any sensitive data of any kind in these Firebase configs. So that includes passwords, user data, anything that could compromise any user or part of your system. The reason for that is that these remote configs can be decoded. It's also important to keep in mind that you can only have up to 2000 remote config parameters in your app. And each of these parameters is subject to a specific length and content limit. So lastly, keep in mind that you can store up to 300 versions of your remote configuration. And each stored template of your remote configuration has a maximum 90 day lifetime. All right, so here we are in our code base and we're just gonna walk through what you're gonna need to add to your application to get up and running with remote config. So here you can see we're in our remote config service in an Angular application. Uh, but to get started with remote config, you just need to import remote config from the Firebase library uh, and just add that to your, your service. Uh, as well as set up some enums. So these enums that we have here are going to coordinate uh, with the keys that are in our Firebase remote config so that we can grab those values that are set uh, on the server or set default values with these enums right here. So now we're going to take a look at the constructor for our Firebase remote config service here. And you can see that we're before the constructor, we're just setting and creating a private remote config variable and we're typing it to the Firebase remote config. Um, and then that first line in the constructor, we're actually going out and getting our Firebase remote config and setting that variable. The next line, we're just using this to in our Firebase remote config settings to set a minimum fetch interval in milliseconds. And here you can see we have it as five seconds. The standard is to in the default and what you're supposed to have this at is uh, every 12 hours just so you're not constantly trying to fetch for these new values. Um, you just kind of want to get them every now and then. And then we're, we're calling uh, this.setDefaults, which is just our next function down there. The We're just setting our default, our in-app defaults, as we mentioned earlier. We have a greeting, our greeting message and our greeting message color. Um, so our message is hello friend and our color is just black there. And yeah, that's our constructor. All right, so lastly, we have the helper function get remote config by key. And all this is going to do is it's going to utilize the fetch and activate method on the 
class variable remote config that we set up earlier. And the fetch and activate is going to combine two singular methods, fetch and activate. And what fetch is going to do is it's going to go to the Firebase remote config backend and grab the remote config that's set up on the backend and pull it down to your local client. Activate will then essentially turn on this remote config so that we can use different getters to grab various properties and values from that remote config. So you see we're using the fetch and activate and that's just going to return a Boolean value in the form of a promise. And um, the Boolean value just essentially tells you whether or not the remote config that you pulled down has already been activated or not. Uh, we're not really looking at that value right here, but we are going to use the get string method on our remote config on the next line. And so you can see that we're expecting the uh, remote config key that we passed into this get remote config by key helper function to uh, have a string value in our remote config. So we're just expecting string values here, but uh, you can use the get number and the get value methods if you're expecting a number or a JSON object uh, respectively. So next we just have a console log and we're gonna return that value that we got out of a remote config so that whoever's calling this helper function can then make some sort of uh, logic decision to turn off functionality, change the appearance, uh, you know, do any of the things we listed above that remote config is really geared towards. It's also important to note that when you call the remote config that get string or get value, what have you, if those uh, keys do not exist in Firebase, the Firebase console remote config yet, then you'll just be returning your in-app defaults. Um, so there's no harm done if you're trying to call these and they don't yet exist in Firebase. Now we're on our homepage component and we're just gonna set up a couple of variables so we can actually use our remote config uh, variables. So we're creating a variable for our greeting message and a variable for our uh, greeting message color and these are both strings. And then in our ng on init function, we're actually going to set these variables. So we're calling our get remote config by key function that we created in the remote config service. And we're using that enum just to retrieve these values. Um, we get back a promise um, with our value and we're setting that to our, our component variables that we created right up there above um, the ng on init. Then in our homepage HTML, we're going to actually use these variables that we set up in our component TypeScript. Um, we're just gonna be showing the greeting message as a text in an H4 tag, and we're using the ng style to actually use that, uh, com that color that's gonna be coming back from our remote config as the color of the text uh, of the greeting message. So the setup that we have here is a really good example of A-B testing. So we could A-B test the color of this welcome message to see which one users prefer more or which, one's user, which one users interact with more. And that's just a prime example of why you would want to use this with remote config. So before we jump into the demo, we did add one extra console log in our remote config service. And we're just going to console log the result of calling dot get value on our string key instead of dot get string. And as you'll see in the demo, this is gonna provide us with a little bit more information. Now that we have the, our app running locally, you can see our hello friend text being displayed and it is as the default um, color black. And in our console log, you can see when we do do the, uh, the remote config dot get value, uh, we get an object back and it actually shows us that we're using our default um, configuration. And we'll, as you'll see a, bit, a little bit later, um, when we're actually fetching from the remote config in Firebase, once we set that up, um, it, will, it will be a different value. I believe it will be of a source remote. Um, so actually, let's head into Firebase and take a look at that. Now we're in the Firebase console and we're going to set up our remote config properties. So to get to the remote config section of the Firebase console, you're just gonna open the left side menu and click on the uh, remote config tab under the engage section. So you might have to expand this and then the remote config is down here with this little branching icon. So now that we're in here, we're gonna minimize this sidebar and you can see the remote config wants us to add a parameter with a key and a value. But what's really cool is that we can add conditions to these parameters. 
And so if we just navigate over to the right hand side, you can see we can add a value for the parameter we're about to uh, put in here. So we're going to define a new condition and you can name this condition whatever you want just so you can identify it uh, as well as a color. Uh, this just helps for identification purposes. This isn't part of any logic that actually gets implemented. Uh, but here you can select what you want this condition to be based on. So you can select, hey, what platform are they using? What language, country, region? You can incorporate your user audience from Google Analytics. Uh, you can do, do a random percentile of your users that will get this uh, config property. Uh, or you can base it on the date and the time of the request. And so if you do select platform or one of those options, you'll get a uh, more specific set of conditions here. So you can say, hey, I want to set up this condition for web as well as Android. And so you can uh, do multiple. Well, I guess you can't do web and Android, but you can do multiple conditions for platforms. Uh, so that's how you set it up. It's pretty cool. A lot of advanced functionality there. But we are not going to be using the uh, parameters or conditions today. We're just going to set up our basic keys and values and see how it affects our application. So the first key that we're going to set up is the greeting underscore message. And we're just going to type in a new value here. All right. So now that we have our value entered here, we can go ahead and click on add parameter. And that's going to take us to a new screen where you can see the different analytics for your Firebase remote configs. Before that config is going to go live, we do need to click on the publish changes button up at the top here. And so as soon as you click that, it's going to say, hey, this is going to be immediately available. So we're going to hit, hit publish changes and boom. Now our client app has access to this key from the Firebase backend. We're now back on our locally running app. And if we go ahead and hit refresh, we should see some changes in our app. And as you can see, it says subscribe to small batch devs now. And if you look at the console logs there, on the first one, you can see now the source is remote. And our second one is still default. So let's actually go update our color remote config and see the changes in our app again. Back in the remote config page in Firebase, we can go ahead and add another parameter for our greeting message color. So we'll give it the parameter key of greeting message color. And as our default value, um, we're going to say red. Now, this can be a hex value or like a CSS uh, text value. Um, so we're just going to use red for now, but you could use a hexadecimal value as well. And we're going to go ahead and save this and apply those changes as well. Here we are back on the home page of our locally running client app. And we're going to go ahead and refresh the page after publishing that new remote config parameter. And what you'll see here is that the subscribe to small batch devs message has updated to red. So we both with both of those parameters set, uh, we can see that both of them are coming from our remote config, which is the Firebase backend, and both of them are being applied to our uh, client application. Just as a quick final note, if you do prefer to save your remote config information as JSON objects instead of just plain strings, what you can do is click on the Add Parameter button here, and on the right-hand side there, you see the JSON um, curly braces, so you just click on that and it'll open up another page and you can actually add JSON instead of just a string or a number. Um, so that's how you do that. If you enjoyed this video and you learned something, make sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe to our channel. Maybe even hit the notification bell so you get notified. We're also planning maybe on doing a A-B testing video with remote config or feature rollout, just kind of diving into this, the more specific details. Um, so if you'd enjoyed that video, make sure to leave a comment down below um, and let us know what you want to see. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you very soon. Peace.